It is time for one of the dumbest things we do as sports fans in the calendar year. Way too early record predictions following the NFL schedule release. So I'm going to go through the entire Broncos 2023 schedule, and I'm going to hand out some wins and losses. Now, this is just a fun thing we do. This is the last little like taste of football we have until training camp rolls around. We got some mini camps, some OTAs and whatnot, but we all can agree it's premature. We have no idea who's even going to be playing in week 12, but if you think it's dumb, you're deep down doing the same thing. You're going through the record. You're going through the schedule. You're handing out wins and losses in your head. So let's jump into it. Now, quick disclaimer, not to toot my own horn or anything, but last year I went 10 for 17 in my record prediction. So if you are looking for this to be like set in stone, I've got a decent track record, I guess, but uh, I'm definitely not putting this on my tombstone or resume you know, 10 for 17 record production last year. Now, to remind everyone of Denver's 2023 slate, they open up the season with two straight home games. The Raiders and the Commanders come to town before going to South Beach and taking on the Dolphins. Then they go up to Chicago and face the Bears. Week 5, Hackett's return to Denver with the Jets. Week 6, they go to KC on Thursday night football. Week 7, the Packers come to town before playing the Chiefs again two times in a three-week span. Week 9, they get a bye. Week 10, after the bye, Monday Night Football against Buffalo. And then another primetime game the following week at home against the Vikings on Sunday night. Week 12, the Cleveland Browns come to town. Week 13, Denver goes to Houston. Week 14, they continue their road trip to L.A. to face the Chargers. And then a third straight road game with the Detroit Lions in Week 15. Week 16, they play the Patriots on Christmas Eve night on NFL. Network 615 Mountain Time. Week 17, they play the Chargers at home before wrapping up their season at Vegas in week 18. So speaking of Vegas, the first game of the season is against the fraud Josh McDaniels, and I've got Sean Payton winning at home. No need for the home crowd to count down the play clock for the offense. Sean Payton starts his tenure in Denver off with a bang, a win against the Raiders. Week two against the Commanders, 2-0 start. Things are looking up in Denver. I think Sean Payton is a better coach than the two, two he's going to face with Riverboat Ron and Josh McDaniels. So I think he can get his squad to a 2-0 start at home. And honestly, this fan base just desperately needs to see some good football. And they will see some good football right out the gate. Then week three, the rematch with Vic Fangio and Bradley Chubb. I think the Dolphins are going to take care of business in this one, and Denver picks up their first loss of the year going 2-1 and one to start. Week four, they continue their road trip. Another loss, this time coming in Chicago. Justin Fields and the Bears are going to be a lot better than they were last year when they finished uh, worst in the NFL. So I think the Broncos' road trip ends 0-2. But that Dolphins game, like, that is going to be a lot of fun. Week three, it's going to be one of those, like, hey, what are the good games this Sunday at noon? Oh, yeah, Denver, Miami, Vic Fangio, Bradley Chubb facing their former teams, Russell Wilson, Tua. It's going to be one of the better noon games. I'm already declaring it right now. So I'm excited for the Broncos-Dolphins matchup in week three. Now, what do you think the toughest game is for Denver this year? You can easily go with Kansas City. And you're not wrong. But if you want to go outside the box and pick a non-division opponent, let me know what you think it is. Could be the Dolphins. That's definitely not going to be a cakewalk by any means. Give me your toughest game prediction down in the comments. Week 5, I cannot wait for it. That's honestly why they might lose to the Bears. They'll be looking ahead to Week 5 to play Hackett and the Jets. More on that in just a little. Week 6, Thursday night football at Arrowhead. It's going to be a loss. Last year, I think I had the Broncos splitting with the Chiefs, winning at home. Until proven otherwise, I just have to assume, sadly, at this point, KC is going to win. Week 7, Jordan Love and the Packers are going to suck this year. I think this is going to be a win for Denver uh, as they face uh, a coach who might be on the hot seat after this year, LaFleur with Aaron Rodgers out of town. Week 8, I'm sorry, but at the same time, can you really get all that mad at me? I mean... What ground do I have to stand on to believe that Denver has done anything to prove that they are going to beat the defending world champs, the Kansas City Chiefs? So for that reason, I've got KC sweeping Denver. I'm not proud of it by any means, 
but I can't sit here with a straight with a straight face and go, they are going to beat that team, no doubt about it. Now, speaking of the Chiefs, we'll talk about this game first and then go back to Hackett and the Jets. Um, Kansas City, they have had Denver's number for quite some time. We know this. This is a Thursday night game. And after last year, like the last thing I want to see is the Broncos on primetime because they do not warrant much of it after the disgusting showing that was 2022. So I could easily see the Chiefs uh, reminding Denver of their primetime woes last year. But the game I'm really excited about, it's the Jets game. It is the Hackett return game. I like, like, I know I'm being a bit facetious right now and I'm having a lot of fun with Hackett and poking fun at him. He's a nice guy. I thought he'd be a good coach, cool dude, but not an NFL head coach by any means. So this is going to be like fan revenge. I don't even know it's so much player revenge because I don't think the players hated him. Like he didn't leave Denver like McDaniels left, right? He left Denver of, whoa, we definitely just made the wrong hire. It's not so much your fault. You had no business getting hired in the first place. But for the fans, yeah, after all the much anticipated hype and wait for that to be an awesome 2022 season, the fan base is going to get the Boo Birds out for Hackett in his return. Now, as for Kansas City, 15 straight uh, wins for the Chiefs against the Broncos. Hopefully it ends this year. But again, I, I, I just can't, like, in good faith say this is the year Denver beats KC. As long as Mahomes is there, they are going to be the favorites. It's going to take an upset. Upsets happen, but the Chiefs have not lost a road game with Patrick Mahomes as their quarterback so far. So, in the division. So, I, I just have to wait to see it to believe it. Now, before we get to the rest of my schedule prediction, we are trying to get to 14,000 subscribers by the time training camp rolls around. We've got mini camp and OTAs coming up in the following weeks, but help us reach 14,000 subs, 437 subs to go. I know it's a big number, we can start just ch chipping, ch 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 chipping away at it. We will reach that number, so hit that sub button down below. Week 9, Denver gets a bye after a tough slate right there. The Chiefs twice in three weeks. The Jets with Aaron Rodgers. The Packers, I don't think they'll be good, but at least they got you know their head on, you know, on their shoulders as a franchise. So they get a much-needed bye before playing the Bills on Monday night. I'm going to go with a loss here. Sean Payton's a very good coach coming off the bye, if I remember correctly. But Buffalo is just a better team. And Monday night football, an extra bye, really, right? You get the whole bye week and you don't play until Monday night. So there might be a lot of, like, smoke around, whoa, Denver's got way, way too much rest compared to Buffalo. But I'm going to go with Josh Allen and the Bills at home here. Week 11, this is going to be the number one thing America is Googling before this game. When can you switch a team out of Sunday Night Football? It's Week 12. So this is going to be a Sunday Night game against the Vikings. Kirk Cousins on primetime plus the Broncos on primetime after last year equals war, war crime. Like, it, it is not going to be fun for anyone, anyone to watch. But I think Denver's going to find a way to win. It might be another 12-9 to 9 game like last year's against the Colts, which was a loss. But I think Denver's going to eke out a win. I think the Vikings are going to regress. Week 12, I've got them dropping a game at home against the Cleveland Browns. Deshaun Watson's going to be here for a full season, and the Browns are not going to be an easy out. Week 13, they go on the road, and they beat the Houston Texans. I think every team doing record predictions is probably having their team beat the Texans. Houston might win two, three games. I don't think one of those two or three games is going to be Sean Payton and the Broncos. Now, that Monday night, excuse me, that Sunday night game against the Vikings, I think Minnesota's due for a major regression. And I think Denver is due for like a little bit of a come up with, I know no one wanted to watch us in primetime last year and everyone was begging to get us, get us out of the national spotlight after the 49ers and the Colts game and so on, the Seahawks game. But maybe this year, a little bit of an uptick where it's not as embarrassing, but it's still hard to watch. All right, before we get to the rest of the schedule prediction, we've got a great deal going on over at Fanatics. You can get not one shirt, but two shirts on sale, long sleeve and a short sleeve t-shirt combo when you use our exclusive link, chatsports.com slash D-E-N combo. Week 14, they pack their bags and go to the Chargers. I'm going to give the win to L.A. here. Justin Herbert and the Chargers, 
It's a do or die season for them down in sunny California after a premature playoff loss and an all time choke job by LA. Um, maybe they find a way to get a division win at home like they did last year against Denver. Week 15, I'm going to have Denver win in Detroit. I think there's too much hype around the Lions. And this is going to be one of those games where Lions fans are like, oh, we're playing the Broncos. They're like a 500 ish team right now. Should be an easy win. Not so fast, a win for Denver on the road. They keep the winning going, though. Week 16, taking on the Patriots. This is Christmas Eve night, NFL Network, 615 Mountain Time. And this is going to be a very, very big game for Denver if they want to finish above 500. You have to take care of business at home against teams at your level. And New England is a team at their level. Week 17, I feel bad about this one, but I've got the Chargers sweeping Denver. Now, Maybe they do a reverse of last year where they sit all their starters at this point. No, it can't even make sense for that to be week 17. I just wanted to make fun of the Chargers once again for just being the most Charger team ever and playing their starters in week 18 and Mike Williams getting hurt in a meaningless game for them. All right, week 18, rounding out their season. They knock off the Raiders. I think the Raiders are going to be like a four or five win team this upcoming season. The only reason they might not fire Josh McDaniels is they are some broke boys down there in Vegas, and they cannot afford a buyout and paying a new head coach. So I've got them beating the Raiders in Week 18. Now, that marquee game, I think, in the last couple of weeks here, Christmas Eve at home, Christmas Eve night, the 24th, 6.15 p.m. NFL Network, a standalone game, and at home against, at one time, was a huge rival for the Broncos, and same for the Patriots going the other way. Now things have settled down a little bit with no Brady or Manning clashes, but I think this is going to be a very fun game and a very big win for the Broncos. So with that being said, predict Denver's record in 2023. What do you have them going? They won five games last year. I'm going to give him more wins with Sean Payton. How many more wins? For me, it's a 9-8 and eight season, right? They had nine one-score losses last year. I think Sean Payton is good to flip four of those nine and get this team above 500 for the first time, and I don't even want to do the math, but six, seven years at this point. So with that being said, 9-8 and eight season, I'm not sure if that's good enough to make the postseason. Last year, Miami got in as the seventh seed with nine wins, but we have seen 10-win teams miss the postseason sometimes. So for now, a 9-8 and eight season, a good start for Sean Payton's time in Denver.